Welcome to the Fix Sleep Bedtime Stories channel, your sanctuary for relaxation, meditation, and a peaceful sleep. Immerse yourself in the soothing embrace of sleep-inducing tales, carefully crafted to transport you to mysterious lands. Let the gentle rain and serene sounds of nature accompany you on this journey to relaxation. Say goodbye to restless nights and welcome the embrace of a restful sleep with our magical sleep stories. So, let the tale begin. Magical Trials of the Thieves Chapter 1 the Notorious Thieves In a distant kingdom, nestled in the heart of a vast landscape, surrounded by dense forests and clear rivers, lived two notorious thieves named Marcus and Leif. Their infamy spread far and wide, reaching every corner of the kingdom. Marcus and Leif were renowned for their unmatched skill in thievery, slipping into homes and treasuries without leaving a trace. Their cunning and agility made them virtually invisible, and their stone-cold hearts showed no mercy. They were as much a part of the kingdom's folklore as the forests themselves, inspiring both fear and awe among the people. Despite numerous attempts by the kingdom's best guards and most skilled trackers, no one had ever managed to capture Marcus and Leif or stop their nocturnal raids. They moved like shadows, appearing and disappearing with the night, leaving the royal coffers lighter and the townsfolk bewildered. Their exploits became the stuff of legend, whispered about in hushed tones around campfires and in the safety of family homes. Marcus, tall and wiry, with piercing blue eyes, was the mastermind, always calculating their next move. Leif, shorter but muscular, had a face perpetually hardened by the life they led. Together, they were an unstoppable force. One clear, moonlit night, Marcus and Leif set out on what they believed would be another routine heist. They moved silently through the forest, their path illuminated by the silver light of the full moon. The forest, usually so familiar to them, seemed to glow with an otherworldly light. They made their way to a clearing they had never seen before, a place bathed in an ethereal glow. As they stepped into the clearing, they stopped short, their eyes widening at the sight before them. Hovering above a rare and exquisite flower that radiated golden light was a small, glowing creature. It was unlike anything they had ever seen. The creature barely a foot tall, had delicate wings that shimmered in the moonlight, and her entire being seemed to emit a soft, soothing light. Her face was serene, with large, luminous eyes that sparkled with wisdom and mischief. She was a magical fairy named Luminara, known in the ancient tales of the forest, but thought to be mere myth. What an invaluable treasure, whispered Marcus, his eyes gleaming with greed as he observed the fairy. His mind raced with possibilities. Capturing such a creature would not only bring them untold riches, but would also elevate their status from notorious thieves to legends. Let's capture her and sell her for a fortune, added life his voice barely a whisper, but filled with excitement. He quickly began to prepare his net, 
his hands moving deftly and silently. They had captured many treasures in their time, but none as rare or as potentially valuable as this. As Marcus and Leif strategized their capture, Luminara remained seemingly oblivious to their presence. She floated gently above the flower, her wings fluttering softly. The flower itself was a sight to behold, with petals that seemed to be made of pure gold, each one glowing with an inner light. It was said that this flower bloomed only once every hundred years, and those who witnessed its bloom were granted a glimpse of magic. The thieves edged closer, their movements synchronized and precise. Marcus gave a slight nod to Leif, signaling that it was time to cast the net. Leif, crouched low, readied himself to spring into action. Just as he was about to release the net, Luminara's eyes flicked towards them, and a mysterious smile played on her lips. It was as if she had known of their presence all along, and had been waiting for this moment. Before the net could leave Leif's hands, Luminara began to sing a melodious, enchanting tune. The sound was unlike anything they had ever heard, a mix of harmony and magic that seemed to resonate with the very soul of the forest. The melody wrapped around them, filling their minds and hearts with a strange, comforting warmth. Chapter Two The Enchanted Forest The sound was ethereal, a symphony of notes that wrapped around the two thieves, filling the clearing with a palpable sense of magic. The melody seemed to draw power from the earth itself, and the air shimmered with an unseen energy. As Luminara's song filled the air, the world around Marcus and Leif began to shift and change. The familiar forest clearing, with its moonlit trees and rare glowing flower, faded away. In its place, a completely different world emerged, one that seemed to exist on the cusp of reality and fantasy. They found themselves standing in the heart of a magical forest, a place where the boundaries between the natural and the supernatural blurred. The trees in this enchanted forest were unlike any they had seen before. Tall and majestic, their trunks were covered in intricate patterns that glowed faintly in the dim light, as if they were inscribed with ancient runes. Faces emerged from the bark, their expressions kind and wise, watching the newcomers with a gentle curiosity. The leaves rustled softly in the breeze, whispering secrets and ancient stories, creating a constant, soothing background hum. All around them, mystical creatures roamed freely, each one a marvel of nature and magic. Tiny fairies with wings that sparkled like diamonds flitted from flower to flower, their laughter like the tinkling of tiny bells. Majestic deer with antlers covered in moss and flowers grazed peacefully in the clearings, their movements graceful and serene. Unicorns with coats that shimmered like pearls trotted elegantly through the underbrush, their presence adding an air of grace and wonder to the forest. Birds of vibrant colors perched on branches, their songs blending harmoniously with the ambient sounds of the forest. Leif was the first to break the stunned silence. Where are we? he asked, his voice trembling with a mixture of awe and fear. The familiar forest they had known all their lives was gone, replaced by this surreal, enchanted landscape. In a place 
place where your hearts will be tested, came the gentle voice of Luminara. She appeared before them, her radiant form glowing softly in the dim light of the enchanted forest. Her presence was both calming and commanding, filling them with a sense of wonder and apprehension. To leave here, you must pass through three trials and prove that you have a good heart and courage. Marcus and Leif exchanged uneasy glances. They had faced many challenges in their lives as thieves, but none like this. The enchanted forest felt alive, pulsating with magic and mystery. They knew that their usual tricks and skills would be of little use in such a place. They would have to rely on something deeper, something they had long forgotten. As they stood there, trying to grasp the reality of their situation, the forest around them seemed to shift and change, leading them deeper into its heart. The air grew warmer and the light softer, as if the forest itself was guiding them toward their first trial. Marcus and life walked cautiously, their senses heightened by the unfamiliar surroundings. Every step they took revealed new wonders, flowers that glowed with an inner light, streams that sparkled like liquid crystal, and creatures that watched them with intelligent eyes. The path they followed wound through the forest, taking them past ancient trees and over small, babbling brooks. The beauty of the forest was overwhelming, a stark contrast to the dark, mundane world they had come from. It was a place of enchantment and magic, where anything seemed possible. As they walked, Luminara continued to guide them, her presence a constant reminder of the trials they would face. She moved with a grace that was almost otherworldly, her feet barely touching the ground. Her light illuminated the path ahead, casting a gentle glow that made the forest seem even more magical. Marcus and Leif couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and trepidation. They were thieves, used to taking what they wanted without regard for others. But in this enchanted forest, they were out of their element. The magic of the forest seemed to seep into their very bones, awakening emotions they had long suppressed. As they ventured deeper into the forest, the air grew still, and a sense of anticipation filled the atmosphere. They knew they were approaching the first of the three trials, a test that would challenge their hearts and spirits in ways they could not yet comprehend. The enchanted forest had brought them to this point, and there was no turning back. Their journey was just beginning, and the path ahead was uncertain. But one thing was clear. Marcus and Leif would never be the same after their time in the enchanted forest. They had come seeking treasure, but what they would find was something far more valuable than gold or jewels. The trials that awaited them would test their courage their compassion, and their capacity for change. And in the process, they would discover the true meaning of strength and redemption. Chapter 3 The First Two Trials The first trial led Marcus and Leif to the edge of a deep chasm where a narrow, suspended bridge swayed precariously in the wind. The bridge was ancient, its wooden planks rotting 
and its ropes frayed and thin. It stretched across the chasm, appearing barely able to support any weight. On the far side, a small, helpless puppy cried out desperately, stranded and unable to cross. Its plaintive whimpers echoed through the chasm, tugging at the hearts of anyone who heard it. We can't waste time with this, said Marcus, his voice sharp with impatience. His eyes scanned the bridge, calculating the risks. It's just a dog. We have to focus on getting out of here. But Leif had a twinge of sympathy for the scared animal. He had to pay attention to the puppy's screams. With resolve in his voice, he answered, We can't just leave it here. Without waiting for Marcus's blessing, he cautiously stepped onto the bridge's first plank. The bridge creaked ominously under his weight, swaying with each cautious step he took. Life moved slowly, his eyes fixed on the puppy, whose cries grew louder as he approached. Each plank seemed more unstable than the last, but life pressed on, driven by a newfound sense of compassion. Halfway across, a gust of wind made the bridge shudder violently. Life paused, gripping the ropes tightly, his heart pounding in his chest. Be careful, Marcus called from the edge, his voice tinged with a mix of concern and frustration. Leif nodded, focusing on his task. He continued, step by step, until he finally reached the other side. The puppy, seeing Leif approach, wagged its tail weakly, its eyes filled with hope. Gently, Leif scooped up the small animal, cradling it in his arms. The puppy licked his face gratefully, and for a moment, Life felt an unfamiliar warmth in his heart. As he turned to make his way back, the bridge seemed to stabilize beneath his feet. Each step back felt more secure, and by the time he reached Marcus, the bridge was no longer swaying dangerously. The chasm below them slowly filled in, the deep void disappearing, and solid ground taking its place. They had passed the first trial. The next challenge awaited them as they continued their journey. The path led to a deceptive swamp, its surface covered in thick, greenish-brown muck that bubbled ominously. The air was filled with the sound of croaking frogs and the occasional buzz of insects. In the center of the swamp, an old woman called out for help, her voice weak and trembling. She was trapped, her frail body sinking deeper into the mire with each passing moment. Help! Please! Someone help me! she cried, her eyes wide with fear. This could be a trap, Marcus warned, eyeing the swamp warily. We should be careful. Leif, however, was already stepping forward. We can't leave her to die, he said firmly. His previous act of kindness had stirred something within him, a sense of responsibility he couldn't ignore. Marcus hesitated, but then followed, the reluctance in his steps evident. Together, they waded into the swamp the thick mud sucking at their legs and making each step a struggle. The old woman's cries grew more desperate as they neared her, her arms flailing as she tried to keep from sinking further. Hold on, we're coming, Leif called out, reaching her side first. He grabbed one of her arms and Marcus took the other. With considerable effort, they began to pull her free from the muck. The mud clung to the old woman like a living thing, 
resisting their attempts to free her. But Leif and Marcus did not give up. They heaved with all their strength, the mud slowly relinquishing its grip. Finally, with one last mighty pull, they managed to lift her out of the swamp and onto solid ground. Breathing heavily, the old woman looked up at them, her eyes shining with gratitude. Thank you, she said softly, her voice trembling with emotion. You have shown great courage and kindness. As she spoke, her form began to shimmer and change. The old, frail figure transformed into a radiant, youthful woman, her tattered clothes replaced by a flowing gown. She was a good witch, and she smiled warmly at Marcus and Leif. I will reward you for your bravery and compassion, she declared. The marsh turned into a lovely meadow, with vivid flowers and lush, green grass, with a sweep of her hand. The aroma of blossoming flowers filled the air, and the meadow was filled with the sound of birdsong. Marcus and Leif stood in awe. The beauty of the meadow, a stark contrast to the dangerous swamp they had just navigated. They had passed the second trial, and the transformation of the swamp into a field of flowers was a testament to their growing sense of goodness and courage. Chapter 4 The Last Trial and Metamorphosis Marcus and Leif were taken to a remote clearing in the magical forest for their last trial, where an old, elaborate mirror stood. This was no ordinary mirror. The surface shimmered like liquid silver, ever shifting and whirling, and the frame was decorated with elaborate carvings of vines and fantastical creatures. It felt like there was magic in the air around it, as though the mirror itself was sentient and aware of their presence. Luminara appeared beside the mirror, her luminous form glowing softly in the dim light of the glade. This is the mirror of truth, she explained, her voice gentle but firm. It reflects your deepest fears and desires. To pass this final trial, you must face what you see and understand the truth about yourselves. Marcus and Leif exchanged uneasy glances. They had faced physical challenges and shown compassion. But this trial was different. It required them to confront their innermost selves to lay bare their souls in a way they had never done before. Stealing themselves, they stepped forward and gazed into the mirror. Marcus was the first to see his reflection. The mirror's surface rippled and then cleared, revealing an image that struck him to his core. He saw himself standing alone in a desolate landscape, the sky gray and stormy. His clothes were tattered, and his face was lined with age and sorrow. Around him lay the spoils of his many thefts, scattered and meaningless. There was no one to share his victories, no one to admire his cunning. He was utterly alone. The sight filled Marcus with a profound sense of emptiness. All his life, he had prided himself on his ability to outwit and outmaneuver others, to take whatever he desired. Yet now, faced with the stark reality of his isolation, he realized how hollow his victories had been. Without companionship, without love or friendship, all the wealth in the world meant nothing. Next to him, Leif's reflection also came into focus. 
he saw himself surrounded by friends and loved ones, their faces lit with joy and laughter. They stood in a warm, sunlit meadow, a stark contrast to the bleak landscape Marcus saw. Leaf was at the center of it all, not as a leader or a thief, but as a friend and equal. The happiness in his heart radiated outward, touching everyone around him. Seeing this vision, Leif felt a swell of hope and contentment. He understood now that true fulfillment came not from wealth or power, but from the bonds he formed with others. His desire to help and protect had always been there, buried beneath the life of crime he had led. This vision brought it to the surface, clear and undeniable. At that moment, Marcus understood that he needed to change his life. The mirror had shown him a future shaped by his choices, and he did not want to end up alone and unloved. He turned to life, his voice trembling with emotion. I was wrong, he confessed. I have been selfish and greedy. I want to change that. Life nodded, his own heart full of resolve. We can change, Marcus. We've already started. We can use our skills to help others, to make this world a better place. As they spoke, the mirror shone brightly, its light enveloping them both. The image of Marcus alone in the desolate landscape faded, replaced by one of him standing beside life, surrounded by friends and loved ones. The reflection mirrored the vision life had seen, a future where they were no longer thieves, but protectors and friends. The mirror then disappeared, leaving only Luminara standing before them, her eyes filled with pride and warmth. You have proven that you have heart and courage, she said, her voice resonating with approval. You are free. In a flash, Marcus and Life found themselves back in the luminous clearing where their journey had begun. The night was serene, the stars twinkling above them. They felt different, transformed. Luminara smiled at them one last time before vanishing into a cloud of sparkling stardust, her work complete. From that day on, Marcus and Leif never returned to their old ways. They dedicated their lives to helping those in need using their skills for good. Marcus's cunning and strategy were now tools for planning charitable endeavors, while Leif's strength and bravery were used to protect and support the vulnerable. The distant kingdom, once plagued by their thievery, became a safer and more prosperous place because of their efforts. They became known not as notorious thieves, but as guardians and benefactors. Stories of their transformation spread throughout the land, inspiring others to seek redemption and change. The enchanted forest had not only tested them, but had also given them a new purpose, one that filled their lives with meaning and joy. <laughs>